Uh, no, it's and not. Back. Re- Dave Vellante here, Wikibon.org. I'm here with Mark Peters, senior analyst at ESG. Welcome to the Cube, Mark. Hello. Sorry Great. to be interrupting Ronnie. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're interrupting Ronnie. He's talking about um, waking up every day and going woo. Oh, I wonder what the woo thing was. I caught the end of it. He's, okay. He's done woo a few times in okay. his life. You know, playing with guys like Jerry Rice. Let's see if we can have a woo moment. Yeah, let's okay. have a woo moment, right? So, uh, well, this is, this announcement is pretty woo, wouldn't you, don't you think? This uh, this Hitachi announcement. What uh, what's your take on it? Um, actually, I don't know what everyone else has been saying, but my main thing, the main thing that really interests me about this is how they've done the announcement and what this represents for Hitachi. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about the product. Product's lovely, product's wonderful, lots of great features, but we all know there are elements there that, that it's kind of a leapfrog in the market. You know, someone else will come out with something bigger, faster, cheaper eventually. What I think is significant about this, and, and you tell me too, Dave, because you've been around the market a long time, many, many people think that Hitachi has um, great equipment, great support, great technology, and yet it remains a leader in the market, but not the leader in the market. And I think it's always played this safe, conservative game. Um, and I'm sure people who are listening to us saw some of the, 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 today's events. Drums, yeah. things falling over, smoke, and you, whilst you can make fun of them, it also, and I'll, I'll give a more serious aspect to this in just a second, it also signals the fact that they're serious, that they want to play. And to me, it's the marketing element of this that's huge. Just a quick example, if I may, of something. Yeah, please. I was, I was talking to um, a, a journalist last week. You know, the way the process goes, we all hear about things. I mean, Hitachi didn't used to tell us anything before it actually happened. And they go, oh, yeah, we're well, sorry, we forgot to tell you that. Read the press release. Big announcements. <laughs> yes, exactly. Whereas here, they've done all the work you should do behind the scenes. I was talking to a journalist about this last week, preparing... Um, their article and they were saying you know I don't like 3D scanning that's wonderful for Hitachi because they were talking about it Mm. now whether things like that catch on whether I heard the phrase today a storage computer you know which reminded me of VMware you know and uh, the software mainframe that sort of thing whether those things catch on or not it makes them part of the conversation and and I don't know why but over the years certainly while I've been following them Hitachi's almost seen to be happy to sit behind the curtain and let everyone else fight it out. And if they're going to make, as you know, Hitachi's been doing very well recently, but if they're going to make the moves in the market that I'm sure they want to, to grow their business, they've got to grow their base. And you're only going to grow your base by becoming part of the conversation. That's a dangerous combination, you know, great product. You know, if if they can combine that with great marketing and maybe a few more feet in the street, would you expect that they would uh, continue to gain share and maybe could they become a leader? Or oh, the leader. Absolutely. I mean, again, the um, this market, the longer you look at it and the longer the terms that you look over, um, the more it changes. You think it doesn't change. You know, it's like looking at kids. You know, When you see your own kids every day, they don't change. And when you see someone else's kids every six months or six years, my, haven't they grown? And that's exactly what could happen here. But they weren't going to do that without an attempt to get a message, get some marketing, get out there and you know, sh- rattle the trees a bit. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You, you see, as we all do, this industry consolidation, it's probably not likely that Hitachi's going to get taken out anytime soon, <laughs> right? No. But, you know, you, you know, I'm talking about a lot of these startups. You saw it with Data Domain. We just saw 3PAR. You know, they're going to be... Th- you even hear it with big companies like, mm-hmm. like NetApp, even EMC, right? Cisco's going to buy EMC. You just, Hitachi is that, that one constant, but they've changed a lot over the years, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now, were you in Japan? Um, I was, yes. Do you, you, tell us about that trip, because a big cultural aspect of the announcement today so what was that like i would say it's fair to say that the the japanese end of the company is where the conservatism comes from um there's a very and and that's also why the products tend to be very good i mean you know the japanese don't tend to rush things out that don't work um and so you see that methodical approach it's also why if you look at the uh what hitashi's done for years there is a new big announcement it's pretty regular every five years roughly speaking they're not rushing things out 18 months down track changing everything they're happy to let one product live its life so there's a consistency a um methodological method what's the word i'm looking for methodological that's the one definitely that's lots of symbols but anyway (laughs) there's a roll off the tongue anyway there's there's a very clear careful cadence to what they do um but i'm glad to see for you know for our western palettes i'm glad to see something with a bit more verve come out today makes a real encouraging change so let's talk a little bit about the industry you're an industry watcher what's what's hot these days that you follow um, storage is hot. Storage is storage Did, sexy. Is storage? I saw that, so is I'm very careful sexy? what I say now. Yeah. Totally sexy. Are we ready for the dance? <laughs> um, well, actually, storage is sexy. 
and the, the reason it's sexy is because it's high on everyone's list and mm. therefore you know defining sexy as important and of, un- of interest because I'm English we don't do sex <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so you hear all the terms I'm going to come to two that I think are really important because it's all, all the stuff about virtualization and cloud and so on and so forth and scale out yes that's all very interesting it's all very important it's how we do things but I think there are two things out there that are really significant um, one is a general point and one's a technology. The general point is economics. You cannot have a discussion about storage these days without economics and economic value, um, both from a cost perspective and from a value perspective. Both of those have to come into the equations these days. And I just think that's because for decades we concentrated in storage, in IT, on getting the job done effectively. That didn't necessarily mean efficiently. And I think there's a subtle distinction between those two words. Effectively mean getting the job done well. Mm. Efficiently adds getting the job done well using the, you know as few resources as you possibly can. So that's one side of the equation. The other technology that's just huge in my um, view is solid state. I don't mean solid state disk. I mean solid state is a much bigger um, array of technologies. And it's been, for all of us who watch it, I actually sold solid state back in the 80s, believe it or not. This is with SDK. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, big giant mainframe size boxes yes, about, that plugged into a mainframe. About right? a megabyte and about a zillion dollars. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> but it was the same principle then. Very expensive, very good if you had the right application. Certain data sets, it worked. Yeah, right. but the challenge and linking to today, the, the challenge has been, and I think, you know, why SSDs been on the cusp and us chatterati have all been talking about it for a year or two. It hasn't done that hockey stick yet. Um, it's still seemed to be, yeah, it's really good at doing certain things, but it's really quite expensive and it's hard to use. And it's that hard to use thing that lots of vendors, Hitachi included, with what they're talking about today, are beginning to address by making it something that you don't need to worry about that's part of an automated tiering process. Mm. And that leads back to the other thing about the economics that I was talking about. And you're seeing it permeate everywhere, right? Not just plugged into the disk drive, but you're seeing like Fusion I.O. doing PCIe and popularizing that mm-hmm. and people picking up on that. And, and, and do you think that's an either or or it's a both? Oh, gosh, no, it's a both. And I think the it, it, one of the things that depresses me is you see people talk about solid state as if it's one thing. Solid state is, that's why I was careful not to say SSD. Solid state is an array of things. Now, at the end of the day, it's really just expanding all the way down from memory and mainframe memory, and, you know, sorry, down from the main memory. I shouldn't say mainframe, shows my age, doesn't it? Um, it's okay. Down through the servers, yeah. Got in, a lot of mainframers in the cube. <laughs> into, I'm one myself. In, into <laughs> the storage itself, and as you say, it comes out whether it's in the server, um, whether it's as an appliance, whether it is as an SSD. What's intriguing to me is people talk about it all as if it's one thing, and yet they're quite happy to have a hierarchy of other storage. And then what sort of SSD are you going to get? Well, no, it's going to be a whole range. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Oracle. They're a real sort of new, new kid in the block, right, mm-hmm. with a new face. I mean, they've been around forever. But uh, you guys have written at ESG about about Oracle and 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 the impact that they might have in the business. Are, are they insane? Brilliant? Both? What, what's your take on that? Clearly, insanely brilliant would yeah. be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been around the press before. Um, brilliantly insane. No, I think the, the the question that many people are asking when they bought some, which of course bought Storage Tech, and full disclosure, I used to work for Storage Tech for many years, so I'm kind of a bit biased when it That's comes right, to Oracle tape. selling tape library. Oracle is selling tape. Wow, I mean, who'd have thunk? <laughs> you know, the uh, that really is. I don't even talk about that. consolidation. Holy I can't. Cow. I can't think of a really good analogy for that. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, I think the question when Oracle bought Sun was, you know, were they buying it for software, or were they buying it for hardware, were they buying it for both? Um, I was actually at Oracle World last week. I, I think they're serious. Um, they want to be a systems player, and you can't be a systems player without hardware. Were you at uh, VMworld as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so different vibes. No, I wasn't. I was at oh, EMC World, and it's, they get so confused these days. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. So was it a little, I, we were there, a little different vibe, a lot different vibe from Oracle Open World. I mean, VMworld, I said, was like Woodstock, and everybody was happy, a lot of love, very open. Oracle was, you know, very closed, dominating, sort of world revolves around Oracle. Mm-hmm. You know, here's mm-hmm. our box, put it in. Um, two different philosophies, right? I mean, uh, and of course, now you're seeing EMC go one direction with the, the, the open ecosystem. Hitachi seems to be very open. It's going to, mm-hmm. you know, play with everybody in Oracle. Mm, closed, mm-hmm. dominating. What's your take? Is it is it is it kind of Oracle and IBM, you know, going after that vertically integrated stack, and everybody else has to Gosh. compete with this sort of open systems approach? Or h- how do you I see that shaking out? This is an odd thing to mention first, but something just in terms of the vibe of places. It was interesting, Jack, when he was doing his, you know, yeah. he was on here, wasn't he? Red mm-hmm. T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
who'd have thunk? I right. go to, I go to Oracle. There's all my ex Sun Storage Tech colleagues with ties oh, on. Of course, right. I mean, so Oracle, if it wants to be anything, yeah, it probably wants to be IBM. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's the that's probably the target that they have. Um, what was the question again? Because I totally forgot. We're just rapping about Oracle, you know, and and, and the open versus closed sort of philosophy, and and um, you know where Hitachi fits in and all that. It's going to be interesting with Oracle because clearly they would like to be closed, but they're going to talk open. Um, and I think many organizations are like that, but they manage to say both things at the same time. We, we, we were saying it should be called the Oracle Closed World. <laughs> yeah, though, and again, another comparison. Which is that is, unfair? Well, I put it, it's hard to get out of their world because it's so big yeah. when you're there. I've never been before. I mean, the damn thing is huge. Enormous, it's right. huge. So you can't you're in actually, the bubble. <laughs> you, you're San it was impressive. Fran, no San doubt. Fran Oracle impressive. or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. Right. But here's, here's the thing that's interesting, and, and I heard a f couple of instances today that I actually liked. It is hard as a, even though we're in the business, it's hard, let's say you were just a regular person walking down, you've never heard of Oracle, you walk down the street there and it says, you know, five of the top five banks use Oracle and 89 of the top 90 whatever yeah, use right. Oracle. Yeah, everybody all. uses Oracle. Yeah, right. but it's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's it? very impressive. It was yeah. nice to hear some of that said in here today because again, coming back to that sort of almost um, corporate shyness that I think Hitachi has represented. They might not realize it because they all work for Hitachi, but those of us who watch the business, they've always been the quieter player. And to hear them, Jack was up saying, you know, and whatever it was, you know, 80% of the Fortune 500 using Hitachi, that sort of thing. That's good to hear. That's the sort of thing that yeah. users actually are, uh, want to know. That's an interesting observation you're making because you know, pr it, it used to be really hard for Hitachi to get its customers to stand up on a stage in an announcement like this mm -hmm. and tell them we saw Lloyd's Banking Group um, up there today talking mm -hmm. about how they're you know deploying the technology I think it's because they've used it it, it worked as promised mm -hmm. and they're happy mm -hmm. you know I mean that's a good sign and and so I, I'm definitely seeing a change in terms of, of of Hitachi and the loyalty and it's around that that virtualization platform so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that so ESG did a study um, in August and it was published and it was it, one of the pieces of the study was VMware penetration, storage penetration in VMware. And EMC came out as the far and away the leader, which doesn't surprise me, right? There's a, you know, it was a US-based study. I have to be, you know, clarify that. Mm -hmm. North America um, and statistically valid. You guys do, I think, a really good job there. So EMC came out number one in VMware virtualization. Hitachi, on the other hand, um, is all about storage virtualization, which mm -hmm. really isn't EMC's game, right? Mm -hmm. um, so is Hitachi sort of the leader in storage virtualization? Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, it's really hard to tell. Um, and I'm not trying to duck your question. No, we had all. IDC on. They didn't know either. <laughs> oh, and they well, should know. They count hey, all this stuff. Yeah, right? there you that's go. Their, Absolutely. That's their jobs. No, but I think I don't know what they said. But I think the, the interesting thing and the real way you have to look at it, I'm, I'm going to give you a, uh, a sliding answer and then a real answer. The sliding answer is, who knows? And how do you really count that if you're IDC or whoever does the numbers? Yeah, is it licenses? Is it well, revenue? Is it terabytes? Yeah, but also, is it uh, exactly? Is it is it terabytes? Wow, he's noisy. Um, it's okay. That these, 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 these that? mics are amazing. Directional. Yeah. yeah. So, is it the um, is it the number of terabytes you're managing? Is it the value that produces for certain companies? Is it the number of sites? Is it the size of sites? Everyone will always find some way they can be the est, you know, biggest, fastest, tallest, or whatever in this business. Um, the, the glib but important thing, and, you know, obviously a lot of users are watching this, more than just vendors, hopefully, yeah. um, is to look at what you're actually trying to do. I hate to be really, really twee, but what are you trying to achieve? which set of applications looks to be best to suit that and what architecture infrastructure you're going to run those on. It's as simple as that. Excellent. Mark Peters, uh, Senior Analyst at, at ESG. Great advice for users. Mark, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to have you. Thank you, David. Appreciate your insights.